Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well today you join me in my 2012 Range Rover Westminster as I'm on my way to go and pick up a 1999 Ford Focus that I've bought for just £150. Normally I would just scrap this kind of car because it just isn't worth the hassle. There'll be no profit in it, it'll break because of its age, and then the person buying it will either call me up in floods of tears or want to fight me. It's just more hassle than it's worth, it really isn't worth the stress. Plus the price of metal's gone up, so I'm pretty sure I'd get 250 or 260 for it in scrap alone. But today, rather than scrap it, I was thinking, can you buy a decent car for less than a couple hundred quid? I know what you're gonna say, you're gonna say, no mate, you cannot. Because if you look on Autotrader, the cheapest cars out there are always 495, 695, 795. But that's because the seller has already put their margin on it, and quite rightly so. But if you keep your ear to the ground, you almost always hear of these cars. People always want to get rid of their old scrap car that's just parked in the driveway for months and months because they don't use it. Or they're buying a new car privately and they can't parts exchange it, so they literally don't know what to do with it. For them it's just too much hassle. They don't know how to process the logbook, they don't know where to begin, they don't know who to call. This is where you can sweep in like a knight in shining armour and snap up a bargain, because you're providing a service. I like this sort of stuff because I know it's a lot of messing around, but it's how I started my business. The first seven cars that I bought, I paid a thousand pounds for them, for all seven. They were all main dealer part exchanges, they were all set to be crushed, but luckily I managed to get in there at the right time and snap up all seven, provide them a service, clear the space for them, and just make their lives easier. I'd regularly buy cars for £200 and then sell them on at 595 695 I'm not saying it's a, it's a pretty or stress-free way of making a living, but there is definitely a living there. There are just always people looking for cheap runarounds. Let me just clear something up though. I understand that most people don't drive a cheap car because they want to or because they think it's funny. Most people drive a cheap car because that's all they can afford. But I just think occasionally it can still make sense, even if you can afford better. I often think this, especially at the moment with fuel prices being so expensive. I recently paid £1.82 for decent diesel. I often think, imagine how much better off I'd be financially if I sold all my cars and just bought something like a, a Yaris hybrid. I'd have no stress, no fuel bills, no road tax bills. Anyway, there's zero chance of that happening, but it's a nice thought that I get from time to time. Enough of my pondering. Shall we go and have a look at this old bone of a Focus that I bought? See where my £150 has gone? Oh, by the way, don't forget to check out my raffle for this car. I've teamed up once again with Raffle Shack, who are kindly raffling this off for me. You might have seen the videos I've done with it. I did a fairly standard review of it, and then I also did a before and after video showing exactly what I had done and how much it cost. I thought I'd sold it to my mate who had a change of circumstances so it couldn't complete, and then I sold it off the forecourt and the guy left a deposit and then changed his mind. I was inundated with messages from people asking me if I'd raffle it off, so I thought, why not? There's not long to go and the tickets are selling quickly, so check out raffleshackuk.com. As always though, only have a go if you can afford to do it. It is a form of gambling, so do gamble responsibly. What's funny is that this car's been parked up in our storage compound for the last week or 10 days or so. So I thought today, I better go and get it. Better go and make sure it starts. I don't want the battery going flat because then you can have a load of warning lights on the dash. Sure enough, it fired up on the button, but straight away after driving around in my sport for the last two or three weeks, this just feels like a proper luxury car. When I first got this, I came out of my L405 and this just felt like a downgrade. But compared to the Sport, everything's just softer and more comfortable and more luxurious. And straight away you feel like a, a royal rather than a roadman. Anyway, horses for courses, I guess. Well, here we are then. I don't know why I'm so excited about a 23-year-old Focus. My first car was a black Focus like this and it's just brought back a load of memories. I'm looking forward to driving this, you know. It's a pre-facelift with the indicators built into the bumpers rather than the headlights. And there'll be more nerdy facts like that to come. Beforehand, let me just do a quick car history check. Now, I always use a company called Car Vertical. I'm sure you'll have heard me talk about them in other videos. But they're just so thorough with the checks. They check to make sure it's not been involved in any accidents, there's no outstanding finance on it, the mileage hasn't had a haircut, as they say in the trade. Right. So all you do is go to carvertical.com, type in your reg number, which in this case is T for Tango, 594 K-E-W, like Q, like Q Gardens. And then patiently wait for a few seconds. There we go, right, it's all clear. Never been stolen, no mileage rollback. Let me get the full report then. I should say, by the way, I've done a deal with Car Vertical, whereby if you use the promo code HIGHPEAK or click on the link below in the video description, they'll give you 10% off. Just waiting for it to generate the report now. 
Right, the report is ready to be seen. So it was manufactured on the 1st of January 1999, registered in the UK in March 1999. So it's just had its 23rd birthday. And it even shows all the previous MOTs, all 20 of them. Let's go to the most recent one then. Let's see how long the MOT has got left. The current MOT runs out in about a month and there were three advisory items. Front brake fluctuating but not excessively, near side front tyre worn close to legal limit on the edge and offside front wheel bearing slightly noisy. It's not too bad is it? I was expecting it to be riddled with rust and advises about rusty sills and all that sort of stuff but no. So it's never been used as a driving school car, rental car, taxi, never been scrapped, exported. Ah, right, very good. Mileage wise, it has done, well, done 133 at the last MOT, I believe. 132,955. Right, let's go and have a look. Right then, well, we've got all three keys taped up wing mirror. The bodywork is quite poor. That's had a poor repair, that. Headlamps are cloudy. More damage on the wing there that's been painted with a aerosol tin. Another damaged wing mirror. I think they've used bathroom sealant there on that one. Rust around the wheel arch. Oh, it's an LX. I think that means it's got air conditioning. I think. Mine didn't, mine was just a Z-Tech. Oh, look at the velour. It's funny, isn't it, how a car can instantly uh, remind you of things. Like I say, my first car was a 19... Uh, no, it wasn't. It was a 2000 Ford Focus, 1.8. But the interior was just like this. The pre-facelift Ford Focuses had this small badge. The O2 onwards one had a large badge. I know what you're thinking. That's fascinating, Matt, isn't it? What a fascinating piece of trivia. Oh, yeah, aircon. Look at that. Always had this little compartment here that I'd keep my change in. Ashtray there. Mine had the exact same cassette deck, which I then swapped out and put a CD player in. Hmm. Two cup holders. They really were ahead of the time with the Focus, you know. It was way better than the old Escort that it replaced. Oh, it's diesel. That's unusual. I've just seen the curly glow plug light. 135 on the clock. Will it start? Of course it will. I think off memory these were about 90 horsepower so I'm not going to get any speeding tickets. Cigarette light has been used. Oh yes, uh -huh. set to smooth set FM. Go direct to LV.com. What a clean old dog. I know I say this on most videos but I'm quite impressed. Electric windows in the front. Mine had these manual windows, and that on the driver's side of mine would always fall off when you went over a, uh, a pothole. On oh, the boot release switch is there. Yep, yeah, exactly the same as mine. This. Quite a warm day. What are the odds of the air conditioning working? Slim to none, I would say, but we'll we'll try. Let's take it for a quick drive then and see what it's like. Well, straight away, I'm 17 again. Red line in between gear changes. It's been years since I've been in a Mark 1 Focus. Absolutely years. Like I say, the Mark 1 Focus though was way ahead of its time. It was way better to drive than the equivalent Mark 4 Golf. Thanks to its clever independent suspension setup. Bit of smoke there under acceleration. I suspect this car's just potted around town for the last five years. Never had a good blast out. It's a little bit knocky when you go over bumps, but not too bad. Cars like this always make me realise how spoilt we are in the UK. Everybody wants the newest and the latest, whereas anywhere else in the world, this car would be on the road for another decade at least. I'm guilty of this rampant consumerism as well, to be fair. You only really notice it when you go on holiday to places like, I don't know, Morocco or Turkey or... Even Spain, to be fair. You often see things like Ford Escort still pottering around. 
I remember spending hours cleaning mine every weekend. This one particular time, I cleaned it before a mate of mine flew over to Spain to meet me where I was living at the time. And this one evening, I was just getting on the, the on-ramp onto the N340 motorway, dual carriageway thing near Miramar, if anyone knows the area. And he was drinking this massive icy slush puppy thing, which he didn't like. So he decided to throw it out the window. And the windows were that clean because I've just cleaned them. He didn't realize it was shut, he thought it was open. So I had slush puppy absolutely everywhere, all over the steering wheel, all over the dash, in my hair. I still don't let him drink or eat my car to this day. He's an animal. I just know that he'll be watching this now, giggling to himself. Well, this drives really well. It's only a five-speed box. But for an 88 horsepower diesel, it actually pulls very well. So here's the dilemma I've got again. What do I do with a car like this? There's still a bit of life in it. I would say the wheel bearing that was advised on the last OT hasn't been done because you can hear a, a faint rumble there. But was it offside? You can hear a rumble anyway from the front. And there is a bit of judder under the pedal, under the brake pedal, but nothing too serious to be fair. You know what, even the air conditioning works. I was so adamant that that wasn't going to work. Yeah, it's definitely cooler than outside. This isn't the kind of thing that I could ever sell from work because even if I priced it very, very cheap, you just attract the wrong sort of person. The last time I did that was an old Peugeot 206 or something that I'd just taken in part exchange and I advertised it at, I don't know, 495 or something. I think I'd given 300 pounds for it in part X. And this guy came in who was, well, as I later discovered, just a drug addict. So he came in with his sunken eyes and, you know, shaking as they do. And I thought, rather naively, that he was just after a cheap car to get back on his feet, maybe. Perhaps he'd got a job. But no, he was using the car as a drug delivery vehicle. So over the next two or three weeks, I got no end of tax reminders, parking fines, bus lane fines from all over the country at weird hours of the day. So it really just wasn't worth the aggravation. You know what I might do with this, actually? If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen this. I recently got rid of my old Shogun Sport that I did a video with a few months ago to a Ukrainian guy who follows the channel and he got in touch because he was hoping to buy a cheap four-wheel drive car and then fill it full of medical supplies and clothing and all that sort of stuff and take it back to his hometown in Ukraine. Because of the heartbreaking, dire situation over there, he tells me that this is going to be a regular thing. So I might get in touch with him and see if he wants it. I don't want anything for it, obviously. I was pleased to be able to help in some way with the Shogun, to be honest, because obviously, as most of you, I imagine, have been watching the news and I've really been thinking of ways that I can I can do something to try and help. I didn't want to just donate money to a charity because you never know where the money goes. You often find out after the event that the director of that charity drives around in an S-Class Mercedes and flies everywhere private, and I hate that. But at least by helping him find a cheap car or perhaps, you know, donating this car completely, that might help. In fact, after the Shogun, he asked me to keep an eye out for cheap four-wheel drive. So I put a post out on Instagram asking anyone who's got a, a cheap four-wheel drive to get in touch. Something perhaps that's expensive to tax and they don't know what to do with. Something perhaps with a short MOT. It won't matter because it's, it's been exported immediately. So if you do, then please email me, matt at highpeakautos.com. Let's all try and chip in and help one another out. Um, well, I think that's about it then. There's not much else I can tell you about this car. I've quite enjoyed being back in a 23-year-old Focus. It's brought back plenty of memories. And I expect, especially here in the UK where they rust away for fun, this might be the last one for some time. I was just about to try and do a handbrake turn there, but... <laughs> Grow up really. Right, well thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know and I'll do my best to get back to you. So yeah, cheers guys. I'll see you next time.